happy. I'm really happy to be getting back to the book. You actually just went outside for recess. Chapter 50. Dr. Zim stood in the mining company office shaking his head. This situation requires a little more finesse, Mr. Weber, he said into his microphone. This is much, much bigger than rounding up child labor for your cobalt operations. Return to base, me, return to base immediately. You heard him, echoed a senior executive who was also a member of the Corps' governing board. Leave those children alone. Come back here immediately. Dr. Zim and the high-ranking official were watching the scene unfolding in the nearby village on a video monitor. It was receiving a signal from a tiny camera embedded in the mine manager's sunglasses frame. Ooh, that's clever. The device also was also providing some of the sound they heard the sound they were hearing. The rest was coming from the microphone dangling from the boy named Klaus's earpiece. Yahav had given the Special Forces communications device to Klaus to use in emergencies. He failed to mention that the microphone would remain open at all times, whether Klaus was calling for help or not. This was how Dr. Zim knew Klaus talked in his sleep. The listening device was working even better than the tracking device that Yahav had planted in the solar-powered Einstein toy, which had perfectly pinpointed Max's location. I better return to the village, said Yahav, who was in the mining company's air-conditioned office sipping tea with Dr. Zim and the executives. Klaus will wonder why I didn't respond to his distressed call. And if I may, why didn't you? asked Dr. Zim. Do you have a plausible alibi? Sure, said Yahav with a shrug. Spotty reception. I was up in the hills doing a reconnaissance mission, just like Carl and Isabel. Ah, we need to detain those two, said Zim. They keep protecting that girl. We will, said Yahav, but I am assuming the girl is still your top priority? Mr. or Dr. Zim nodded grudgingly. Of course. Then she will remain my top priority too, said Yahav. But maybe next time we'll figure out a way to make certain Carl and Isabel stay out of the picture. Yes, said Dr. Zim. Make it so. By the way, it was a pleasure finally meeting you face to face. He held out his hand. Dr. Zim's skeletal smile widened. And I assume it will also be a pleasure to pick up your pay in person. I hate those banking fees. How about you? said Yahav. Dr. Zim handed Yahav an envelope thick with cash. Doc, oops, sorry. Let me know when you're ready to pounce, said Yahav, tucking the bundle of money into his cargo pants. I'll help coordinate ideal conditions for a snatch and grab. Once you have the girl, I'll work with some local mercenaries I know to permanently remove Carl and Isabel from the equation. I'm sure they'd all enjoy the all-expense-paid vacation to Siberia. Excellent. Stand by for operational details. We'll try again soon. Yahav saluted and exited the room. When he was gone, the mining executive turned to Dr. Zim. How certain are you that this girl can guide us to the revolutionary new computer we desire? Very certain. But she's just a child. Twelve years old. Zim grinned his sideways dog sneer grin. He knew Max Einstein's secrets. He knew her power and her potential. He knew about her more or knew more about her than anybody on the planet. Oh no, my friend, he replied, replied coolly. Trust me. She's much more than a child. Much, much more.